Okay, Jason, thank you very much for joining us for New Shopper today. Um, how's your summer going so far, if you don't mind me asking? No, very well. Season, I'm in between doing my mentoring program and working in the gym and on the road to getting fit for pre-season, waiting to get signed up by another club. So I've been on holiday a couple of times with the family, so yeah, quite, quite busy really. Explain just what, what you're doing today, you know, the charities that you're working for, obviously Jigsaw for you. Yeah, no, um, it's what we've started over the last couple of months, this um, sort of mentoring program around schools called Reaching Goals and just giving um, the kids and supporting them in opportunities to decisions they can make in life, just inspiring them and finding out if they've got role models and why they've got role models and just giving them a bit of belief that no matter where you come from or what you do, there's always an opportunity for you to make something of yourself from being or from being in the same sort of area, growing up, single parent, uh, finding yourself, it was hard, but it's just showing the kids that some of them do probably come from that sort of background, that there is things outside of where you grow up, there's the, it is a big wide world, and it's just trying to show the kids that there is something out there for them to do. So, you're playing situation at the moment, uh, you know, obviously you're a free agent, right? That's right, yeah. Obviously looking for a club. Um, is this the first time in your career you've been in this situation? Is it a bit weird? So? It's the second time, but the first time it happened when I was at Southampton, when we got relegated from the championship and the club were in the middle of a takeover then. So there was a few of us that were out of contract at the time, but where we wasn't sure on how the takeover was going, we were still training with the club for when pre-season started. So, then it wasn't too much of a scenario of oh, I don't know where I'm at, what I'm doing because I was still associated with Southampton but this time is that I'm not knowing where I'm going to be at for that first week of July when pre-season starts so it is, it is very new to me and, and it's frustrating as well because it's the situation of not knowing what's going to happen and the first time of not knowing that come the first week of training I'm not going to be at a designated place so it is a bit different and frustrating, but I'm confident that something will happen without a doubt. Yeah. But you're keeping yourself fit. Obviously, yeah, you know, if the club comes along, you've got to keep yourself to go, ready yeah, to go. You that know? is it. And so. saying it, rather it happens sooner rather than later, so don't have to miss too much pre season. Obviously, reported for New Shop of the Day. Um, we covered Child and Athletic. Ten years ago this summer, um, <laughs> you signed for them. Ten years later, I mean, well, obviously, they were in the Premier League then. And also, what, what do you think about what's happened? Obviously, League One. Premier League four years ago to League One. It's it's that, it just shows it, what football's like. It, it's no no team has got any right to be in any division because of the stature of the size of the club. Teams have improved that. Newcastle, Leeds, Man City even as well. It, football can turn around like that. It's been unfortunate. It has happened like that. Charles, from the time I left, it was that season they got relegated. And it has been down and down since then. But I think with the new owners that come in and the manager being and Chris Powell, an old friend, I'm sure that now he's going to get his squad together and get the time with the players and get them back in the right direction. It was well documented, he had an alleged fallout with Alan Kerbishley um, at the time. Can you, what are your thoughts on that, if you don't mind us telling us? Myself or my Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was in oh, the, yeah. it was in the press, I mean, back in you know, 2004. It's, it's, as I said, it's one of those things that you can just get blown up. But it, it's, it's something that happens in the change room probably every up and down the country. Um, there was a disagreement between the two of us after a game. Kerbs come out and said something after an argument we had and, and that was it. But I, for me, a, it happened, it went away. When it came out, that's what was a surprise of me because sometimes you expect things to happen in the change room, stay in the change room. It doesn't always happen like that because sometimes you never know who's outside the door. But it was something that happens moved on from it and people look at it because I didn't start playing as much towards the back end of my time being there that it was down to that and it wasn't because there was a time where I was now injured for sort of three and a half stiff cated shoulder so it said these things didn't get blown out of the really. Would you say your best years were, were at Charlton? Yeah because you look back at said, 10 years ago it doesn't seem that long ago <laughs> but go in there and it's it was going there with the fee that I had it didn't Play on me at all. I think a lot of people have thought of that because it took me a while to score a goal. Two months, I think it was. But yeah, I'd say that being a Premiership and being established as a player and as the club were making himself established, Hope himself and a lot of the good players that were at the club at the time helped 
made them be the club they are. Obviously, it's the Chris Powell. Um, it's a club legend. You know, is it, have they made the right decision to bring someone in like Chris? I think, hands down, yeah. I don't think that they they could have gone elsewhere. So, he's been back and forth from the club. Everyone knows that he loves the club and what it means to him. And I think he's the only candidate really that could have that could have got the job that the new owners were were asking to, to be involved in doing that. And I think he take them forward without a doubt. He's making positive steps in the transfer market, obviously possibly two or three more signings today or this week um, being announced. Um, I mean, is he the man to lead Charlton back to the good days again? Yeah, I believe, I believe so. He's got the right team around him. He's still keeping Keith Peacock there, who's, who knows the club's inside out. He's brought Alex Dyer, a good friend of him as well. He's played with him in the past and what the new owners have done, they've brought people and kept people in the club who knows the club brought back the old Chief Scout Jeff Fatir. We brought Paul Hart in who's renowned, renowned for his work in youth and bringing players through. So they're looking to restructure the whole club and I think with Chris there he can only help that to get Charlton back to where they need to get to. All Charlton fans want to know, if Chris Powell offered you a contract this summer, would you take it? Oh definitely look at it. For me it's a club which is very close to me. Same as a few other clubs that are out there, and people that would want me to, to go back here, go back there. But said if it was my decision, I'll try and play for all clubs I've been to in the past. But yeah, definitely if the, if the phone rang, I'd definitely look at what Chris Powell's offering, not just on what the playing side of things as well, because I know that can offer a lot off the pitch as well. And I think the squad that he's trying to assemble, and young players, I'm sure, could help contribute to that at all, uh, as well. So. Yeah, I said my options are open, but if the phone call came, I'll, I'll definitely pick it up. <laughs> so you, you haven't heard anything at all? I mean, obviously there's rumours flying about. No, the rumours always fly around, yeah. About, yeah. Um, I mean, I sometimes hear it from fans, but that's for me, so, yeah. Your best position, what is it these days? Obviously, when you were a child, you were a striker, you played off the yeah. striker. Central midfielder, is that correct now? Um, Maybe. I don't really actually know. To be, to be honest, I've, I've played the last two seasons, really. As a, as, a, as a front man at Blackpool, it was a little bit different. We played sort of three strikers, and it was tending to be either on the wing or through the middle. So the last two years, I still put myself down as, as a striker. But the way that certain formations have been set up from when I was on loan at Doncaster last season, and being at Blackpool, I've still played a fair few games in midfield, which I, I feel I can play as equally as I can up front. Well, we thank you very much for your time today. Um, good luck next season, whether you're at Charlton or not. Obviously, you know, going really well with the charities. So we thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jason. No